I am currently on the Fusion page with just a text node connected to Media Owl 1. So to activate the follower modifier, we're gonna come to the text box, right click, and in the menu select follower, and then you're going to see the modifiers tab up top activated right next to tools. And if we click on modifiers, this is going to reveal a suite of hidden features that can really help elevate your animation to the next level. So if we click on transform tab, and you're gonna see that in DaVinci Resolve 19, this is where we saw the biggest change. If we click on transform, you now have the ability to make changes at either a character, word, or line level. So for now, I'm just going to leave it at the character level and start to keyframe the offset setting here. This is actually going to open up a new section, but we are going to ignore that and come back to the follower section here. Now let's move over about five frames and we're going to keyframe the offset setting again by moving it to the left side of the screen. So if we were to play this now, you guys will see that it's just a normal animation with nothing special really. But this is where the follower can really help us uh, create something interesting by putting a delay in between each character. So to do that, we're gonna go to the timing tab here. This is where the magic happens. So let's say if we were to simply change the delay setting here to one frame. Now what that means is that it's going to create a one frame delay in between each character. So if we were to play this, you guys will see that uh, once the first character starts to move, all the other characters will start to move as well, but with a one frame lag in between them. So this just really opens up a realm of possibilities when it comes to text animation. So let's break this down a little bit more by looking at the order setting first, which is automatic by default, which is also left to right. Now you can change this to, let's say right to left, uh, which can make the animation look very interesting. Uh, you can change it to something like completely random. And what that means is just that the system is going to decide uh, which character to animate first and which character to animate last. Now let's uh, change it back to left to right for the time being. Another setting I wanna look at here is delay type. So over there you have essentially two options between each uh, character or between first and last character. Now we're going to look at the second one first. So what this means is that at the fifth frame when the first character finishes its animation, one frame after that, that's when the last character is going to finish, which brings the entire animation to an end. So if we were to, let's say, change this delay setting to two frames instead of one, again, what that just means is that at the fifth frame, when that first character finishes its animation, it's going to take two more frames for the entire animation to come to an end. All right, guys, now let's go back to the first option there, uh, which is between each character. This is the most common delay type, and I'm just going to spend a little bit more time talking about this. So the way this works is that the first character I is going to move first, and then one frame after that, the second character T is going to follow suit. Now, you would think that one frame after that, the third character T, the next character, is going to move. But that's not how it works because we're not switching to a new line. So that actually counts as a frame, which is essentially an empty frame. So that will then take us to the third frame. And then one, way, uh, one frame after that, which is the fourth frame, that's when the next character T is going to move. And then one frame after that, the character A is going to move and so on and so forth. So uh, this is kind of a detailed look at how uh, this particular delay type works. Now you can of course also change the easing and ease out in between uh, these two uh, uh, keyframes. And once you do that, this is going to automatically apply to every other character. So this can make uh, this animation look a little bit more professional. Okay, so now let's go back to the transform tab and reset everything here. We're also going to change transform from characters to words. And we're going to set up the animation exactly like how we did before. But the biggest difference this time around is that you're going to see everything is happening at a word level instead of character. And this is the biggest upgrade for this feature in DaVinci Resolve 19. This solves so many problems that we had before where we have to come up with workarounds. But this time, uh, all this can be done in just one click. So um, this is looking great, but you may wonder, okay, so now the animation is at a word level, but how about delay? Okay, so now let's go ahead and look at this. 
So the delay actually still is happening at a character level. We're going to now move over one frame uh, and then you see that the word is going to start to move, but another frame after that, and then one frame after that, which is the empty frame, this is when the word tastes is actually going to start to move. Now, because there are six characters in the word tastes, so you're going to have to count six more frames uh, before the empty frame is going to kick in. And then one frame after that, the word so is going to move. Uh, and then you're going to get uh, uh, empty space in between so and good. And then one frame after that, the word good is going to move. So uh, this is definitely a little bit different um, than the uh, the character level, but you just need to keep in mind that the animation is at a word level, but the delay is still counted at a character level. Now, what if we change delay setting from one frame to two? So everything still works exactly the same, but the difference here is just that it's going to take a little bit longer. Now, instead of two frames, it's now going to take four frames for the word it, and then uh, two frames for the empty frame before the word tastes starts to uh, kick in. So then that will take us straight to the sixth frame. And that is when you're going to see the word tastes start to move. And now because there are now six characters in the word tastes multiplied by two, that's 12. So then 12 frames later, we're going to have that empty frame. And then uh, you're going to see the word so start to kick in. So, Everything, again, still works the same way, but the difference here is that we have to add one more frame into the delay. Now, of course, you can also change the delay to a much smaller number, say 0.5, which is half frame. The choice is really yours. Now, one thing I also want to point out here is that for this animation, I think it's perhaps best done if we change it to the line level instead of word level. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Let's go to transform, uh, change it to lines instead of words, and then set up the animation just like how we did before. But this time around, you're going to see that the two words, so good in particular, are now going to move at the same time instead of moving one after uh, the other like what we saw before. So um, yeah, that's uh, again, very easy to do here. And one thing, uh, again, I wanna just point out here is that uh, while the animation is now at a line level, when it comes to delay, you still have to make sure you count everything at the character level instead. All right, so let's wrap up this animation by putting a rectangle masking node on it, and then we're going to hit reinvert. So you guys will now see we have a pretty professional looking word by word animation uh, that can be uh, fairly easily created uh, because of this new upgrade in DaVinci Resolve 19. Now, one last thing I wanna mention here is that everything that you see under the transform tab here can be applied uh, based on the level specified under transform, which is great. But the moment you move away from this tab, let's say if you were to go to the shading tab instead, everything now will go back to the default character level. So I'm going to use the opacity setting here as an example. So let's go ahead and set this up, but you're going to notice that uh, it is still happening uh, at a, a character level instead of the line level, which was specified in the transform tab. So this can be something that the Vinci result perhaps can improve in the future. Let's see if that will happen. But uh, for now, this new upgrade is absolutely amazing. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And as always, I will see you next time.